people look out here and there's, you know, Morongo and PM, Torres Martinez and Awakayante, all these little Kuya villages, what looks like out here in the desert, and it is today. But when people lived in these communities, there was a giant freshwater lake out here. It was a navigable lake. I mean, the Spanish had actually sailed up into this lake 500 years ago. Southern California is one of those few places in the world that had huge population densities and complex villages without agriculture because they had tons of acorns that could supply tons and tons of food for the communities. And my name is John Torres. I'm professor of anthropology and American Indian studies at Mount San Jacinto College and a proud board member here at the Milwaukee Museum. When I walk into the museum, I see history. I see stories that were told with like the gourd rattles that we use for our songs the baskets that our elders have uh, made. I see that our elders thought about us to leave this, these artifacts for us to come and look and remind ourselves of who we are. My name is Geronimo Holmes, member here at Morongo. Well, the museum was founded in 1964 by my great aunt, Jane Pablo Penn, and Catherine Sivasabo, who had a dream to preserve the language and the culture of Morongo and to have somewhere to house that. And it started off with a collection of baskets, and it grew from there. Nenetum Marguerite Pablo, Nehen Malkinach. I am the president of the executive board of directors. Well, the museum really started as a private collection. So there's lots of sort of family heirlooms that are part of this. Uh, other people have donated things, that artifacts and objects that have come from other sites in and around the area. Uh, and it really is a narrative. It's, it tells the story of who the Kuya people are uh, and were. And I think that's important. And so, like I said, we're small, but we have baskets, we have bows and arrows. Um, the entire perimeter of the outside area of the museum itself is filled with grinding stones and milling tools for making traditional acorn foods and pine nut foods and chia foods. And, and a big part of our space, as it always had traditionally been, is our outside garden, where it kind of, we have all the traditional plants in the Kuya language and in English and how it's used. Uh, so to kind of share that important part of Kuya culture uh, that everybody needs to know. The traditional plants, the old native plants that were in this area, all had a purpose at one time. Medicine, food, or housing. There's nothing in here that's not beneficial for you to learn about who we are and this area. At UC Riverside, even when I was in graduate school, uh, there was always some time I was doing a paper or somehow interviews or ethnographies with indigenous people of California, and I'd always come across a reference that I just didn't have. Well, I knew the Malky would always have that. There's a publishing house. It is a clearing house. It is, I tell people, we are a small museum with a really, really big heart of the Koya people. And uh, they would always have the references to every book or every article or every language reference I could possibly imagine. It's here, either in our library or in our bookstore itself. Um, so I tell people, come, come visit a little museum with a big heart uh, and you'll uh, get a real taste of what Koya people were and are like today. The museum has kind of been built around really cultural uh, events. Uh, so we have the agave harvesting event, which is a specifically cultural Kuya event. Um, we also have sort of the, the food festival event where we introduce the traditional foods of the Kuya people, um, chia, agave, acorns. Uh, and then there's the annual fiesta, uh, which is much more a public event where there's different vendors and different booths. And yes, of course, there's food. We can't have any traditional Kuya event without food. You know, singing and dancing, and it's a much more celebratory event. You'll see dancers from other Indian nations that come and bird dancers, also bird singers. Just a lot, a lot of community. Um, well, there's the Kiwit, which is uh, the food event, the, the Morongo Fiesta, uh, and the Agave Harvest. Come out and, and, and see it and experience what this area has to offer. Education, not only educating the Kuya people, but even the surrounding communities is a big part of our mission. Kuya language, early representations of the Kuya language, early traditional songs, early traditional stories, things that folks may sort of remember tidbits of, but here it was how it was told in 1900, and now you can read it and still bring those stories back to life. I want to see the museum continue to prosper, to keep my aunt and, and Catherine Sivasalo's initial vision alive. Kuya people are still here. Um, I mean, of course, the casino's there, and people think, you know, oh, yeah, of course they're here. Uh, but the reality is the traditions, the, the spirit, the song, uh, the culture is still very much alive. Uh, the language is still being spoken in some places. 
Uh, Queer people aren't a vanishing Indian race. The Queer people are here. Uh, and if you want to learn a little bit about them, um, come to the Malky Museum. <laughs>